What's up everybody? I'm out here on the front porch. It's so dark out here, but it's so peaceful, so calm, so quiet. Um, I was hoping to do a video walkthrough this week of the house, but we are just not settled enough yet. Uh, we're still in between the two houses. Most of what we're gonna have here is here, but every time we go to that house, there's still more stuff that we bring back and there's boxes in the house. And anyway, when I do the walkthrough, it's gonna be like the highs of living here. And, um, and in the meantime, I just wanted to share some of how I'm really feeling right now and how I am struggling with this transition. So I was thinking about how can I do this video in a way that's not just gonna be me complaining the whole time. Um, so I apologize in advance if it sounds like that. I really am grateful to be out here. It's beautiful. I don't regret it. I know that we'll adjust, but the last few weeks have just been really difficult. It's all just little things, but if you know me at all or you have watched any of my other videos before, you'll probably know that I deal with some anxiety and some other mental health stuff. and. In general, I just get really overwhelmed really easily. And that I knew would follow me because it's a heart problem. It's not an environmental problem. It's a heart problem. And it's a bunch of little things that have happened. Some of them are bigger uh, that have just piled up and I feel like I'm struggling with the transition. So some of them are directly related to living here and some are not. Um, one example is that is related to living here is that I've had really bad allergies since we started really spending a lot of time here um, and specifically since we moved in and have been living here every night. Um, I Anytime that we go on a nature walk or to go explore something, we come back and I'm wheezing, I'm coughing, um, haven't had a whole lot of watery eyes, itchy, you know, runny nose, that sort of thing. But it's just been so much chest tightness that by the end of the day, I've been using an inhaler, which is not typical for me. I don't normally have uh, really severe allergy issues and I don't even have allergy issues every year normally. So that's been difficult because I just feel like I can't breathe, which then exacerbates my anxiety. Uh, so that's been tough. And then also I've had a lot of rashes. Uh, we've all had weird bug bites and rashes. My son just has this horrible rash pretty much all over him right now. Um, we've had, you know, chigger issues and other things, but I went to urgent care last week, which I'll get to in just a second. Uh, not, not for this, but they said that for me, it's poison ivy. So I have somehow out here, even though I've been careful, gotten into poison ivy or maybe it's oak or sumac, I don't know, um, multiple times and ended up with just these horrible patches of super itchy, rashy stuff that has kept me up at night. And then, so last week, um, I was doing a workout, nothing, um, nothing really intense. It was just an upper body arm workout with three pound weights. And toward the end of it, my vision went really crazy. Um, I started having these flashers in my eyes that were like crescent shaped, rainbow, zigzag, lightning bolt kind of things with a lot of pressure behind my eyes. And I was like, what is happening? So I'm alone in the woods with the kids and uh, I was really, really terrified. I did not know what was happening. Um, I called my eye doctor and then I called urgent care and the flashing went away. But after the flashing was this horrible migraine that I've never had anything like that before. Um, there was so much pressure behind my eyes. It was just, I'll spare you all of the, de the details, but it was terrifying. I wondered because of course anxiety just shows up and is like hey we're gonna make this the absolute worst that it possibly could be right um so I wondered is there a tumor pressing on my ocular nerves in my eyes why why is this happening right now I couldn't see my uh, depth perception was off um and then 
when the headache came, it was just the most nauseating, like full body somehow headache that I have ever experienced before. I had a family member drive an hour and a half to come and take me into urgent care because I was so uncomfortable, I couldn't drive. Um, and then I learned that it was migraine with aura, which I've never had in my life before. Um, my blood pressure spiked. It was, uh, the highest that it got was 154 over 112, which, you know, it's not emergency high, but that's really high. And um, I just felt horrible. I got back that night and was so ready to get the kids to bed. And then I just felt scared. What triggered it? What triggered the high blood pressure that caused the migraine? I don't know. I don't know what triggered it. Uh, and so I kind of felt scared to, to do much. I didn't really want to exert myself too much. Um, and then unfortunately that day, so it was the, the day, the next day after the migraine, um, and my blood pressure did go back down by the next morning, which was great. But our dogs, uh, ripped a hole in the quarter inch hardware cloth on the bottom of our new chicken coop and ate a chicken, our outside dogs. Um, so we got these two outside dogs for protection out here and I just felt as silly as it might sound, so betrayed and so disappointed that these creatures that we got, oh, the, the coyotes are howling. I don't know if you can hear them. Um, these creatures that we got to protect us ate one of our creatures. It was just so sad. Everybody was so distraught. I had to figure out what to do with this dead chicken. I mean, she was just, it was bad. <laughs> it was a bad scene. Um, and I was so tired and I was out there like under the chicken coop, climbing in the chicken coop, trying to repair all of this stuff. And at the same time in my, the whole time in my head, just thinking, is my blood uh, pressure going to spike again? And is the headache going to come back? It was just a lot, right? So some of that stuff is not related to uh, living out here specifically, but then um, there's other nature things, I guess. We found a giant brown tick on one of our dogs, our inside dogs. Um, I don't know if anybody else is as terrified of ticks as I am, but it had been on her for a while, it seems. It was massive, sorry, that's disgusting, but it was big. Um, and, uh, you know, there's uh, stickers, like those little sticker um, sand spurs or burrs or whatever you call them those are coming into the house. We've had, everybody has stepped on some at different points. The baby has ended up stepping on some. I've been trying to leave socks and shoes on him in the house now. Um, and so there's just, a, it's just a lifestyle change. It's stuff that, you know, we went from living in a residential neighborhood where we didn't have a tree. We didn't have a single tree to living, um, in the middle of a place that is just entirely trees and animals and, we are outnumbered by nature out here, which is a beautiful, awesome pro, but it's also a big adjustment. And then you have inside the house, there's just still boxes and I'm trying to get stuff put away. And my, my anxious heart, like I realize this is a, it's an anxiety thing, um, that there's just so little space in the house that that's an adjustment as well. Um, and it's a good thing. Like I, I don't, I'm, I really, I don't want this to be like pity party me. It's a good thing. I'm excited that we're out here and I think it's going to be really good for our family. Um, and it just, it just feels overwhelming right now. And we're still in between the two houses. And so maybe once we get that place completely cleared out and cleaned up and on the market and sold, and we can kind of close that chapter and really just press into this one. Maybe, maybe some of that will shift a little bit. Um, but there's just a lot. There's the silly things like not having a dishwasher. I have ADHD you guys, and I struggle to stay on top of even the simplest chores. I don't ever want to use that as an excuse. I keep trying. I'm not just going to go, well, I have ADHD, so I can't get anything done. I really do try. I try to be diligent. I try to stay on top of things, but I get pulled in so many different directions, which as a mom, even without ADHD, it can be hard to get 
tasks accomplished because you have so many people or, you know, animals, creatures, all these things pulling you in different directions. Um, so it's hard, it's hard either way. Um, and it's not an excuse, but I just, I really do struggle. So I tell myself, okay, we're going to wash our dishes right after we do them. And then by the end of the day, there's so many dishes and then the baby is sleeping in my closet in the other room and I don't want to do the dishes because I don't want him to wake up. And then the next morning I wake up and there's dishes and I'm like, ah, got to start the day with that overwhelm. Whereas in our old place, I 95% of the time made sure to do the dishes before I went to bed. Everybody was upstairs sleeping. I could be as loud as I needed to. And I would tell myself morning Alex is going to thank evening Alex for doing this. And it really, it really does help, but we're just not in the swing of things here yet. We need to get in some good rhythms. Uh, we've been out of school for a while now. I'm not even going to pressure us to get back into that uh, officially until after the holidays. That's another thing is just the holidays. It's a, it's a hard time to be moving um, and trying to uh, do all of the holiday stuff in the middle of a move. And you know, the house is really small. It gets messy and dirty really quickly, but it also cleans up really quickly too. So I have a plug, like a central plug that I can vacuum almost the entire house with the exception of like a little two by three foot space in our bedroom, in the corner of our bedroom. I can vacuum the entire house with just that plug. There's no hauling the vacuum up and down stairs and plugging it into different places. And every time I do that, which is daily because I have to get the dang spurs out of the house every day. <laughs> Somebody help me figure out how to get rid of those because that is insane. They're on our blankets. They're on our clothes. They're everywhere. Um, anyway, I vacuum every day and every time that I do, there's just this little sigh of relief. Like this is freeing. It is freeing to know that six minutes from now, I'm going to be done vacuuming my entire house. So there are pros and there are cons to all of this. And um, the kids are actually doing better than I imagined that they would sharing that small room. Although it gets messy very uh, quickly, they're able to pick it up. And then really they're outside so much that they're not spending hours and hours and hours together in that tiny little room, which was kind of what I hoped and envisioned was that Yes, they're in this small little bedroom together, but they have so much space outside that maybe they'll really utilize that. And they have been, they have a blast out here. And it's an amazing opportunity that we have to be out here. Uh, so I don't wanna take that for granted. I just want to share some of the difficulties of um, where I'm at, how I'm feeling, you know, the highs, the lows, everything, this is real life. Uh, you know, I've been trying to, rest as much as I can, stay hydrated, try to take care of myself, try not to always have in the back of my mind, what if you have one of those migraines again? Um, that's easier said than done with anxiety disorder. That stuff just kind of creeps up on you at inopportune times. Anyway, I guess that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Soon when we're settled, I will do a video of a walkthrough of our house and show how we have things set up. And uh, if you're looking for ways to stay organized, you don't want to follow me for that because <laughs> I'm not your girl on that. I'm not great at staying organized. I'm not great at maximizing space. Um, but if you want to see what our real life looks like inside and how I have things shoved in, shoved in cabinets and not organized, then that'll be the video for you. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.